David Warner has yet to stamp his quality on the DP World ILT20. David Warner's pain continues on his walk back. But his Dubai Capitals are sitting pretty in the top half of the table. With Sikanda Raza a banker with ball and bat, and Sam Billings pulling off blinders and reeling off the runs. It's been a frustrating week for defending champions golf giants with two straight defeats leaving coach Andy Flower and skipper James Vince with much food for thought. But with sweet stroking Aussie Chris Lynn beginning to hit his straps and last year's white belt winner Chris Jordan among the wickets yet again, there is no need for panic just yet. Can the Giants rediscover their champion credentials tonight or will Warner and his capitals prevail in Sharjah? Yes, the iconic Sharjah Cricket Stadium hosts the second match today in the DP World IL T20. And it is match number 11, the reigning champs from season one, the Golf Giants, taking on the Dubai Capitals. Now the Knight Riders just got themselves a win, a handy two points for them against the Desert Vipers. Currently, though, the Capitals sit in second spot on the points table. Two wins, one loss. The Golf Giants coming off the back of two losses, just the one win to their name. It is a truly beautiful night here in Sharjah and we expect nothing less. The DJ is kicking off a real party vibe. We're expected here again. Let's head out to the middle now with Alan Wilkins with the two captains for the toss. Let's introduce you to our party here for the toss. We have uh, Afzal Adam Khan, who is our toss mascot. Standing alongside uh, Afzal is Simon Taufel, our match referee, with David Warner, captain of the Dubai Capitals, and the Gulf Giants skipper is James Vince, who has the coin. It's a home game for the Gulf Giants. Tails. Tails is the call. And it is a tile, so the Capitals have won the toss. We're going to bat. Going to bat first. Right, let can bring in here, Davey. Right, you're going to bat first on this. Same pitch as last night. What, what's your? Wh why have you made that call, Davey? Oh, I think uh, this venue historically runs on the board. Um, if you can bat well through the first six and build a foundation towards the back end, um, so put a, a competitive total up on board. Yeah, you've played on three different surfaces, haven't you, in this tournament? Yeah, it's going to be the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it takes a bit getting used to. Um, but yeah, like anything, um, they've got to try and start as best yeah. you can uh, and hopefully, uh, yeah, put some runs on the board. One of your firing guns is gone, Jake Fraser McGurk. What does that do for your team, for your squad? Yeah, Ben Dunn comes in replacement for him. So, um, you know, he's been going well uh, of recent uh, and he's looking forward to it. Um, he's been training in the house down and uh, he's excited to be back here, partner of uh, the Dubai Capitals. So, what about the skipper? What's happened uh, to the skipper's form? Yeah, look, um, it's one of those things where, you know, you get a couple of different wickets and surfaces and you've got to try and adapt. And, um, yeah, I got a good one last game, uh, which duly criticised me for reviewing. I thought it was a bit high on a <laughs> five-foot guy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to coming out here and, um, yeah, trying to do my best and, uh, yeah, try and get off a good start. All right, Davey, thanks very much indeed. Thanks, we'll uh, look forward Cheers. to watching you play. Thank you. Good luck, thanks. Mate. So well. Right, James, so you're going to have a bowl first on this. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's all right. Um, I was a little bit un unsure anyway. As you say, there was a game on it last night um, and we batted first here in our, our first game, but um, I don't see conditions changing a huge amount throughout the evening. I think we've just got to go out there and do our skills better than they do. Yeah, um, you, you've lost two. Are you, are you looking for this consistency that isn't quite there yet? Yeah, I think, as I said, uh, post-match last game, I think you know we're just slightly off it in certain phases of the game and we know... You know, with the standard of this competition and the teams we come up against, people punish you if you're slightly off it. So, um, you know, we've been in games, as I said, we won our first game, we've been in the other two, so just a, a, a matter of flipping those small moments around to get us, you know, on the winning side. We understand that Jamie Overton is not considered, is that right? There's a concussion? Yeah, I think he's still got one or two days left on the, uh, the right. protocol. Um, and Carlos Brathwaite comes in for blessing from our last game. So uh, he did really well for us at the back end of the competition last year. So, yeah, great to see him back and get an opportunity this evening. Lovely, James. Thanks very much. Have a good evening. Thanks very much indeed. That's the news uh, out here. The Capitals have won the toss. Davey Warner, he wants to have a bat first. Thank you very much, Wilco, the first captain to win the toss and decide to do that first, have a bat first in this tournament. So uh, that'll be very interesting. I've got Andrew Chopper and Niall O'Brien alongside me. Let's see what's on the menu today. Coming up in Cricket Safari, we break down David Warner's struggles with the bat and discuss how he can rediscover his mojo. Sam Billings tells us how he went from milking cows to becoming a superstar in T20 cricket. 
And last year's leading wicket taker Chris Jordan explains how to bowl the perfect Yorker. Yes, it's uh, it's a very interesting matchup in the grand scheme of things, and that toss result very interesting too, Niall. Yeah, first tied to uh, choose to bat first. Not that surprising at this venue, to be fair. I think it's a brave move. You know, David Warner, you win the toss, he's out of form. And exactly what we know about David Warner, he's going to take the mantle, I'm going to bat first. I'm, I'm not getting any runs myself, but let me get out there and have first crack. Form is a funny old thing, and the golf giants have not had too much luck, as James Vince said there. It was just the moments that they need to overturn those moments in the game to make sure that they come across the line with the points today. What is it you think that the coach and captain will be talking about at the moment to help them get that? get those points well the first thing they'll say that this is the place this is the ground they won their first match so go back and remember the good win that they had and these two guys Hemang Badani on the left on the right Andy Flower they're both experienced campaigners as cricketers especially Andy Flower as a coach he will just be reminding his team that they are defending champions and and especially the fact that the difference is that James Wins has done well, but he hasn't done exceptionally well. Like he literally lit up the tournament in the last season, three half centuries on the trot just to start out the tournament. So their batting has been reasonably good, but it's their bowling. They have not been able to defend targets. Of course, it's a trend in this tournament to win uh, the toss and probably chase down the score. That's, that's a separate thing altogether, but they will re require their bowling department a bit more to fire. Andy Flower is a very experienced uh, T20 coach, so he knows all about how it can change very quickly. And when you've got a bright spark in your team that is performing well in Chris Lynn, which we saw in their last matchup, despite the fact that they didn't win, that's important to see your big stars step up when you need them to. Yes, very much so, because when you're a little bit out of form, as we heard from the toss, maybe the side not playing as well as you would like, you look for your senior players, maybe just take that little bit extra responsibility, whether it be in what they say in meetings or with the bat or with the ball. And Chris Lynn has been doing it for 15, 20 years. Uh, had a bit of an injury, but showed his class in Dubai. I thought he played really well in that 63 in Dubai because he assessed the conditions, he assessed it really well, and the opposition, and he played the pitch that he's on beautifully. So more of the same from Chris Lynn. He's been there, he's done it, he's got the T-shirt. I expect him to have another good campaign this year. Uh, speaking of good campaigns, a white belt holder from season one, Chris Jordan, who bowled so well uh, in that first season. What have you made of his performance so far in the tournament, Anjim? Well, he'll also be feeling the fact that uh, the heat, in fact, that he's been taken to the cleaners in Abu Dhabi, 26, 27 runs at the last over. Coming off in Dubai again, he was taken uh, apart by the batters. So he has not been that consistent we know the 20 wickets were there right at the start of the second season. But with the four wickets, it's not just about the wickets, it's about the runs that he's conceding, which is also not helping the cause of James Wins and company. Because when you have a seasoned campaigner, at most times he's actually looked at bowling between 12th and the 20th over. And at that point of time, if you're unable to restrict, it's not an easy job. It's a very difficult task. But then, because he's a skillful bowler, because Wins depends on him as well, he knows tough jobs can be given to Chris Jordan. But it hasn't fired. Not yet. Will he tonight? He is a very skillful bowler. And before this tournament started, he gave us a bit of a masterclass in bowling the Yorker. You know how the saying goes, all is well that ends well. I am Chris Jordan and today I'm here to talk a little bit about bowling variations at the death. As, as far as variations are concerned, um, it's, it's very important um, as a death bowler to, to not give too many tells to, to, to a batsman first and foremost. So in terms of the wide slower Yorker, it's the reason it's so effective in the first place is because the faster Yorker is one of the most difficult balls to, to hit over the boundary. Uh, on the flip side of that, if you, if you have the ability to, to execute a slow ball Yorker, it's, it, it can be even more effective because it really slows the, the batsman's swing down. And if it's right on the pop increase, it's a very tough ball to get under. If you're sequencing a slower Yorker along with a quicker Yorker and you also bowl upwards of 138 to 140, 43, that's where it can be even more effective um, because the batter getting accustomed to your pace and having the same swing for each delivery, it becomes much more difficult for him.
So how will he go on tonight's pitch? The same as they used last night. Let's head out to the middle now with Nelly Jamanos and Wasi Makram for the pitch report. Yes, it is the same strip that we used last night. So what does that mean from a boundary perspective? Just a little reminder, it's quite short if I'm a right-hander to the offside, 61 metres. To my leg side, 73 metres. So much bigger square to the leg side. Now, a couple of players that have certainly had an impact have been a couple of spinners here on this ground. And the reason they've had an impact is because they've been on the stumps. That's where they've been aiming. They've kept it nice and straight, and that's how they've picked up their wickets on the surface in Sharjah. Now, now, somebody who knows the surface really well is the great Wasim Akram. However, it does look a little different to normal, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a very different Sharjah pitch. I mean, I've been coming to this ground, played for 20 years, been coming here for the last three decades. This is the first time this season I've seen grass on it. When I talk about grass, then they're in patches, in clusters. If you look at down there, right there, when I talk about, these are the clusters I talk about, the patches I talk about here. Here and here. What happens is whenever the ball hits that patch or that uh, that particular area, it seems around or skits. And if he hits the bare area where the grass is there but is almost dead, it stops. And that's why team batting second, even with the due factor, bowling second is much better because ball skits a lot more. It's difficult to hit cross line. Well, it's going to be interesting then to see what happens when the golf giants bat second and how tough it'll be for them. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at the team who are batting first here. And that, it, Anjum, talk us through the Dubai Capitals. Just that one change in the lineup, of course, the reliance will be on Dushmanta Chamira later on. So uh, to add on to his seven wickets that he's already bowled in this tournament and collected as well. But David Wono, as Niall mentioned, Ruth Ramanullah Gurba is right at the top. The good part for D Dubai Capitals is that the ones who are below David Wono are firing. So it's not too much of a bad pressure on him. That does help a little bit, doesn't it? And if we take a look at the golf giant side tonight, Niall. Yeah, well, the big news is Zuhaib Zubar. They call him Zabi. Leg spinner from the UAE. Bowls a little bit like Rashid Khan, I'm told. Fast into the service. They need more runs out of Vince. Jordan Cox is electric. Keep an eye out for Hetmar. Hetmar has been very, very quiet. All right, we're going to take a short break here from um, from Sharjah Stadium, and it's a real party here, but it, will it be a party tonight for David Warner? He has had his struggles with the bat. Can he make amends for it tonight? Can he get some runs out of that thing right there? I bet nobody wants it more than him. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Sharjah Cricket Stadium. The Dubai Capitals have won the toss. They're going to have a bat first here against the Golf Giants. And one of the superstars for them with the bat so far this season has been Sam Billings. And we found out a little more about him before the tournament started. Grew up on a farm, a dairy farm. So, uh, yeah, quite a few cat cattle, um, some crops as well. So um, it's been a kind of family thing. My dad and his three brothers uh, all play a part in the running of it, so um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing place to be. True or false, you have milked a cow? True. What was that experience like? It was when I was very young, well first, as a first experience, uh, and then nowadays actually, uh, the last couple of years we've, we've put in a rotary dairy which is all mechanically done now, so thankfully um, my job's gone. Went to boarding school at the age of 10 initially and uh, yeah, loved it. It was an amazing opportunity to uh, obviously get a, an amazing first class education but uh, from a sporting perspective it really gave me a great grounding. Uh, the opportunity again to play all types of different sports, um, kind of five hours of sport when you wanted per day. So uh, it, it definitely played a huge part in, in my development as an athlete. Football's probably my first passion, if I'm honest. Uh, it was my favourite sport. Uh, and as a Man United fan, um, certainly during my childhood, it was, it was the glory days. So I always wanted to emulate David Beckham. He was a hero of mine. Uh, hence why I normally wear the number seven shirt. Winning the competition is, is the priority. And um, I think second to that is giving as much as I can to the environment and helping the environment. Um, 
Yeah, that's, that's always a goal of mine, uh, whichever environment I go into, to give as much as possible. Yes, a bit of a character for sure, Sam Billings, someone you know very well, Niall, but just quickly, have you milked a cow? <laughs> I have milked a cow. My, my in-laws are farmers, so I know what he's talking about. Sure. But it's easy nowadays. Listen, let me tell you a little bit about Sam Billings. Really well educated at school in Seven Oaks, went to Loughborough University, and he's a really intelligent man, but more importantly, right now, his intelligence and his cricket smarts are at the top of his game. Didn't have a great tournament here last year, but this season, a new organisation, a new team, but an environment that he's actually used to because he's played for them before in the IPL. He's settled in really well. He does, let's us back to the talking, not keeping wicked, but also he's a big voice. We've seen him in the dugout, we've seen him in the chats. A lot of talk from Sam Billings, not just leaving up to David Warner. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, there is David Warner, who is struggling with the bat, and there's a lot being made of his struggles. He had a wee jab at uh, Simon Dool at the top there about a very questionable uh, referral. Um, but what do you think he's thinking tonight? Is, is, is tonight the night that the fortunes change for him and his bat and Jim? Yeah, as a batter, as a quality batter, he would be thinking what he needs to do. Probably give himself a little more time. The surfaces where he's batted on, fortunately, have been pretty much in the same venue. This is the first time that they come out of the Dubai International Stadium and play at Sharjah, this team, as Dubai capital. So he'll just probably have that luxury of spending a little more extra time on himself, maybe five or seven deliveries, time the ball, ones and twos, and then he can probably start hitting out at uh, the bowlers because it's essential to know what is his core strength. His core strength is to really dominate the bowling attacks, but at the same time know where the ball is pitching. If you're a left armor from the Gulf Giants by the name of Dominic Drake, you're warming up about now? 100%. I mean, the coaches and the captains here saying, listen, he's got out three times in this tournament for six runs with a strike rate of 37 against left armers. Give Drake's the ball, but this guy averages 35 with a strike rate of 135 against left armers in his career. But these are the numbers this year. That will be an area of concern for any batter, no matter the quality that you possess. That will be playing in the back of his mind. Luckily, he's got a whole 15-year career to draw experience from. That's the thing. And, and, and Dominic Drake, as I mentioned, and Jim, will be getting ready to bowl to David Warner. But how much, when you're a, when you're a batter, does the, now the left arm thing be, become a bit of a thing in your mind? It does play. I will not lie. It does play, and it plays big time as well. Especially when uh, you're a David Warner, and especially when you're a captain and wanting to score those runs. For any batter, it plays, but he will always be conscious of the fact that a left arm spinner has got the better of him. All right, well, I'd love to hear your predictions for tonight. Niall, I'll start with you. I'm going to go for a Gulf Giants home team. They need a win. I'm going to go for Dominic Drakes and the Gulf Giants. Oh, Dominic... Oh. Dubai Capitals. Dubai Capitals. There you go. Right, well, she's all on here at Sharjah Cricket Stadium. It is another glorious night. The crowd has come in. The kids are getting ready to dance. Niall, absolutely, and I agree, believes that the DJ here at Sharjah Cricket Stadium is the best in show, best so far in this tournament. We are expecting big things here for match number 11 at the DP World. ILT20. It is the Gulf Giants taking on the Dubai Capitals. The Capitals have won the toss and they are going to have a bat first and we are getting ready to boogie and ready for some cricket very soon. Stay with us.